considering we're doing a white build, it seems a strange place to start with the black build that we did do an age ago. But most of you wouldn't have realised that we'd done it. Uh, we did do it with the Helios case when it first came out and a nice vertical GPU on it. We used the uh, Thor power supply in the bottom and quite strange as well, we did a double stacked vertical. So we had the GPU in the back, which was vertical. And then this system was mainly used for editing and rendering game footage. So we also had an Elgato in there uh, because we were, when we were doing the graphics cards reviews, we were taking uh, 60 frames a second 4K game footage for us to be able to use in side by side stuff. So long story short, this is a rig that we have used extensively here at OC3D. Right. So now it's time for a new one because they have released a white Helios. But weirdly, the Helios is, when the camera finishes zooming in on the outside, it's actually silver. So that then leaves me with a uh, slight perplexion because it is white on the inside. It's lovely white on the inside and it's easy to see when you go right the way around the back. So you can see that's nice and white. And then we go around the front. All of the stuff on the outside is silver. And the thing is, well, Acer's have been really nice and they've sent other white stuff to go with it. So we now have the um, uh, white Strix power supply, lovely bubbly, lovely, lovely. And then we've also got the Strix white 360 millimeter AIO, which is all cool. But I can't help looking at the on the case and then it bothering me a bit. Now, I know this isn't something that everyone at home is going to want to do, but if it's going to be a white build, I'm going to have to get my mod on. How did you find a way to run from the city of the sun? You could have stayed, it's only Okie dokie. So, nice bit of stop motion. The bottom feet are plastic, so all I'm going to need to do is peel the rubber little feet bits off of it and then plastic primer and then paint them white. Nice and easy. The tops are just solid aluminium. Nice and easy as well. I will teach you about that shortly. But the sides are metal with plastic inserts and you can kind of see this part behind the glass because the glass sits here and I'm not sure whether I want to leave them silver so that there's something for it to go against, whether to paint these bits white. Either way, I'm probably going to have to pull the plastic bits out to paint them because I'm going to be using etch. I'm not sure what the tabs are like. It'll be something that I'll probably do off camera. But anyway, uh, and also I want to retain the rog fabric. Uh, but paint time. <laughs> so it's a very rare outing to the TTL workshop, which I don't talk about very often. Now, I don't want to do a complete video just about painting. So I'm going to go really quickly over some of the finer details. We've got two materials that we need to be painting, which is a bit of a pain in the bum. But I can show you a really easy way to go about it if you go to a decent motor factors or a paint supply shop. So we've got aluminium that we need to paint. Now the problem with aluminium, that means we need to uh, use some etch primer on this. Normal primer won't adhere to it properly. Even once we've sanded it, which I am going to be sanding all of the aluminium with 240 grit and then all of the plastic, I'm going to go over just roughly with some Scotch Bright because I don't want to mark it too much. But with the aluminium, we need to use some etch primer. Now there are two types of etch primer, which is actually a bit of a pain in the bum. I've actually got some primer which does plastic 
and etch at the same time. You can see it on the tin there, makes life really easy, which means I can use one primer for everything. Lovely, makes things easy. But if you end up using this stuff, which is an acid etch primer, this will actually eat into the metal that little bit better. But if you use this stuff or you have it at home, then you do need to make sure that you go over the top of it with a normal primer as well. Otherwise you'll get little bubbles that will raise up because of the acid in it and uh, it will react with the paint that you put over the top. So you must always remember to put some normal primer over the top of that. After we've done our priming, then I'm just going to go straight in with some normal gloss white. One of the other things that you need to make sure that you do after you've done your sanding and your prep work, give it a wipe over with some anti-silicon or some panel wipe or something like that just to make sure you get any grease and any stuff like that off. And uh, also when you're using um, etch primers, specifically the acid etch, you're going to need a really good mask. Not just a dust mask, I've got a full blown thing that makes me look like something uh, out of like a nuclear fallout thing and but I need to because I've got asthma as well so keep in, that you know keep that in mind at home the normal just dust masks are not going to do you any good for the fumes and that's the bit you need to protect yourself from this is our last chance to leave it all behind raise your voice and raise your power your power
in my head by lighting up a fire bury my old thoughts instead so you could feel the same I lay alone with you inside my mind we would dance the night away to the morning light can I give you all of my love till we dance Time to 
back to the end and I've left the lights down nice and low just so that I can spin and show you around. Obviously there will be some B-roll over the top but we have the white case and I will say straight away that the camera does make the difference between the white of the outside and the inside a little bit more, um, it stands out a little bit more than it does to the naked eye, let's put it that way, but the inside is a uh, much more ice white it's got a lot more blue in it if you understand what i mean so if i was to do it again i probably would use a different white but it, it, you're just going to need to make sure that you get a proper frosty white and it's really going to depend how bad your ocd is you could also just go and get a proper color match but i obviously bought just white spray paints as i've said before as well the uh the environment that I was doing it in probably wasn't best, but I was trying to do the best with what I could so that I could show you guys at home. Uh, but anyway, the build. We have our vertical white GTX 2080 Ti, and we've put it on the outside. Now, a lot of people did say about it being starved of the air there, and I have absolutely pummeled that graphics card, and it's not gone above 72 degrees. So uh, it might not be as cool as it might have been the other way. And also, I might add as well, that's 72 degrees with the front fans set to low with the uh, onboard header. So to be fair, I'd be more than happy with that. It hasn't spun the fans up so it'd be noisy or anything like that. It's been a really nice, quiet kind of environment. Also, the CPU in the CPU cooler. There is a 10900KF in there. And uh, what I went for in the end is I went kind of understated to keep the fan speeds low. So I went for five gigahertz, all core, which I got at 1.24 volts. And uh, with um, Prime, with the very top setting for heat and load selected, and then uh, no AVX selected underneath. After 30 minutes of torture testing, the hottest core on the CPU had hit 82 degrees. But again, that was with the uh, silent fan mode for the uh, fans within the Asus AI suite. So to be perfectly fair, for the fact it was so quiet, 80 degrees, I am actually quite happy with. There's going to be very few times that you're ever likely to hit those kind of limits. If I was just gaming, so after an hour and a half of Far Cry 5, the CPU hadn't hit 70 degrees. Again, perfectly happy with that. CP, uh, graphics card at that point, I will add, hadn't um, hit 70 degrees either. So I'm more than happy with the temperatures. Now I did say that we had and would do a double stacked vertical. So I have a small um, four lane cable uh, for the uh, add-on card, which is a 10 G B E ethernet card. And I've made sure I've put that in the four times lane on the board because that's actually wired to PCI Express 2. Uh, so it's not going to take any lanes away from the uh, graphics card or anything because the graphics card is wired directly into the CPU. That lane, if you check the block diagram, is actually wired into the chipset so it goes off the other way. So it's not going to be arguing for any data or anything like that. There is a 16 times lane at the bottom which is wired to the chipset as well, which you could put it into if you want. But for the curves that I got, I just popped it in that one. I haven't done any throughput tests with it because in reality, it was more of a case of showing you that you could do a double stack. You could use that for your old Gatto if you wanted to, um, if you're using a capture card. And like I said, you do have that extra slot on the bottom of the board, which is wired into the chipset. So I'd use either of those two, not the two um, uh, 16 times big slots which are wired into the CPU because otherwise you'll half the bandwidth that you can put on your graphics card. So it's a nice easy way. Then we do have a 16 gigabyte of Corsair Dominator Platinum. It's the new white edition as well. You'll see that I have put some cable combs around the cables. Now they, the power supply didn't come with them. They were just some old ones that I had in a drawer, but I did it to kind of tidy it up. So I've done a few on the 24 pin, a couple on the graphics card eight pin, but the most of them that I used were on the eight pin for the CPU around the back, which you can actually see when you go around to the back of the board. And I think that 
uh, what I've done is you can see that I've put the cable to the left rather than going what I would call the normal right and running the cable down the back of the board then along I've put them all in and through the cable connectors and that is so when the door is on there's not a great deal that you can see but with the plastic shielding I actually think that it looks tidy enough that you could take that off now this is just personal preference but uh, obviously like that isn't going to be like one of the crazy mod builds where every single one of the cables are perfectly kind of matched and done all the way down the thing. This is the sort of thing that you can achieve at home with a little bit of time and you don't need lots of money. Uh, well, you obviously need to buy the hardware, but what I mean is you don't need to spend lots of money having specially cable braided and like all cut to perfect. All of the spare bits of cable are underneath the power supply cover underneath. And when you do look at the power supply cover, you can see the white power supply through here. And you can see that I've covered up some of those little vent holes on it with one of the uh, ROG uh, stickers that it came with, just to kind of show what you can uh, do with that. Uh, the only other thing I've done is I've done all white lights apart from the red ROG eye. And if you were to turn the system off, the Strix logo uh, goes red as well because I changed the uh, profile for the shutdown sequence. It's all fairly simple. Um, it was all fairly slick and, you know, kind of going through. It didn't take a massive amount of time to uh, build it. The only thing I did do is I spent more time than um, most people would do just to try and get my cable tidy and straight. So you can see I've put a lot of the cables directly behind the motherboard, along the top of the board, the eight pin, the um, four pin, for the uh, fans, the USB and the RGB go directly down behind the board and they don't go through the grommets. That's just a little thing that I do. It can take a little bit of extra time, but with a bit of planning, you can do that, put them all down there. And uh, as long as you don't get them stacked on top of each other, you won't have any worry about the pins around the back of the board or anything like that, uh, shorten them out. And as you can see with this, it can make it quite tidy. The only thing is, is with the Acetec pump, with the USB location, it makes it a little bit more difficult to keep it tidy. So what I've done is I've put it underneath the actual CPU mount itself, just to kind of get it tucked that little bit earlier, up the side of the CPU mount itself, and then curls it over and down the board. So just take a little bit more time doing it. The other thing that comes out of the pump is the four pin um, pump RPM, and I'm, I'm not sure whether it's pump power or not, but I think it is. Uh, and I've, if you look, it's actually hidden behind the top MOSFET heatsink, but it is plugged in next to the 8-pin CPU fan header. So there's a lot of cable triggery malarkey. The, uh, one of the things with the power supplies, it doesn't come with individual power supply cables, so I've had to use the daisy chain one, which I didn't want, because I did want to have a nice loop with two 8-pin cables with um, the cable combs on it but I've done the best of what I could do with what the power supply come with. And then the only other thing that some of you might not like is the riser cable that comes out the, the top of the graphics card. You can see it and then goes in, but that's because I'm running the secondary card in there as well. So you need to kind of go for the clearance. So here we have the two side by side, obviously very different color schemes, but very similar builds, it's different AIO. Yes, but still the rock one. And uh, just to make you laugh, as I was filming that, it's gone into sleep mode. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> anyway, the red rog eye should catch up in a second when it all comes back on again. There we go. All right. Funny times. We'll leave that in. So slightly different AIO. Obviously got an Elgato hidden around the back and you can see the extra screen on the Thor. I actually do genuinely think it would be really nice if we had a white Thor, but nevertheless, I do think they do look the part. And it is really nice to see them side by side like that as well. see slightly different cables on that one they are actually uh, cable mod cables they're, they're pro cables with the 
uh, cable combs and everything pre-installed. We just went for a really understated colour. Side by side with the cables on the back, obviously with the cables on this side, the uh, eight pin wasn't long enough. It's a big old case, so it had to go up the side. And also the fans on the AIO, uh, we did it a slightly different way. So the cables are all bunched up here, whereas with the uh, white one, you can see for the fans, I actually put them up around the side to break them up a bit. Actually, here we go, look. So you can see I put the fans cables up around the side to break them up a bit so that there wasn't such a nest. So that's the end of our build off. You got to see the black and the white side by side, very similar builds, obviously a good few months apart and you get to see the nice crisp white Helios. I do think it looks better without the uh, white uh, silver outside and it's all white as well. So maybe they could consider that next time. But in their uh, defense, the white with the silver does actually match the white with the silver on the motherboards. I would just personally prefer an all white case and then leave the little silver bits to be uh, accents because it does kind of tie in with the front of the uh, fans on the GPU and stuff like that, but just a little bit more minor rather than big chunks of it on the outside. But if this is the first video of mine that you found and you enjoyed it, because they are quite long and they are a little bit more in depth, then like, subscribe, all of that sort of stuff. I would love to know your thoughts underneath. Are you a light? Are you a dark? And also, if you manage to make it to the end, you get yourself an internet cookie and you can tell me about it in the comments as well. Would love your feedback. It's been a little while, but this has been a build video with the tiniest one out. Ding. Love you, sis.